Hello, my children, my friends, how are you? I'm very sure you're fine, though we still have this struggle of fighting the COVID-19. Uh, my friends, I want to tell you that make sure you wash your hands. If you want to survive in our country, if you want to come back to school and attend the lessons in the class the way we used to do, let us observe all the SOPs, I mean the soaps, not the other soap we use for bathing, I mean the standard operating procedures. So please, make sure you wash your hands, make sure you sanitize if uh, you have a sanitizer and in the case you are moving out to visit your friends or you are going somewhere make sure you wear a mask i'm very sure my p5 children you know how to put on a mask but i have to demonstrate make sure you get a rope you put in the first year then make sure you cover the mouth and the nose let me hope, of course, for the clear audio, for you to understand me better. I have to remove it, but please don't wear the mask the way I see people do. Some put the loops here and they put the mask down. We are supposed to cover the mouth. Reason, we don't want the saliva to splash and go to our friends. That is how COVID spreads. So please wear your mask, cover the nose and the mouth. Thank you so much. Our topic today, if you remember very well, as we were still here studying, we covered uh, some of the topics that we were supposed to cover the whole year. Beginning first time, we are supposed to have four topics. Uh, the first one, uh, being poultry keeping and beekeeping. That is our first topic. Our second topic is measurement. And I think we had tackled some of those. Then followed by immunity. Lastly, digestive system. Those are the four topics we are supposed to have in our first term. So for today, we are going to look at a certain topic known as Our topic today is the digestive system. The digestive system. So, it's what we're going to look at. But first and foremost, we have to understand what is digestive system? What does it mean? Of course, we have to understand what we're going to talk about. I think it is not the first time to hear it because I have given you all the topics that we were supposed to cover. But now we have to learn and understand uh, our topic here. First and foremost, we have some key words that we have to look at. One being digestion. What is digestion? My good children, digestion is
Digestion <coughs> is the process by which food is a, a broken down into small and soluble substances which can be absorbed into the bloodstream. That is digestion. The sentence here may appear uh, longer, but of course when you put it into account and say I want to get it, you will be able to get it. So please, I request you that you read this uh, definition several times so that you pick it and let it be in your head. As I told you, you remember very well, that whenever you kick in your head, then you won't be disturbed in case you're asked. But when you keep in the book and you put it under the bed, then it won't help you. So please, whatever we learn here, try by all means to make sure that you put it in your head. So digestion is a process. A process cannot take place in only one, uh, let's say in one minute. A process takes time. So that's why we call it a process. It has to meet some, uh, let's say, some different parts where it has to take place. Uh, the process by which food, the food we eat, of course you know the definition of food. Food is anything good to eat. We want to see, in the case we eat food, where does it go? How does it help us? Where does it stop? What is the end result of this food that we eat? So that we know the reasons why we eat food. We studied about food in P4. You remember very well. So let us now see how food moves within the body and how it enters the bloodstream. That is what they are telling us here. So food has to be broken into the simpler, the small sort of substances which can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Our second a key word, we look at the word here, the digestive system, the way you see it, digestive digestive system. What do we understand by this term? Of course, this is a group of body organs, of course in animals, which, in which the food moves by the process called peristalsis. So this is uh, the system or a set of body organs. Let me write it here. Of course, I want you to look at this statement and make sure you understand it very well. Digestive system, of course, these are different parts of the body. It is a system. A system cannot be composed of one part or one, let's say, one thing. It is a set of things which combine together to perform a certain task. So these are different parts of the body in which food moves by the process called peristalsis. So the movement of food along the digestive canal where food passes is known as peristalsis. We shall come to it. So 
Looking at this, we have another term called Armentareka noun. We have another term known as Armentare What is Armentare canal? Of course, these are the terms we normally use in the digestive uh, system when you're talking about the digestion or the digestive system. So this is a macicular tube. This is a macicular tube that runs It is a macicular tube that runs from the mouth to the anus. This is the alimentary canal. Of course, some of you know you begin laughing there. Our teacher is talking about the anus. When we are talking anything concerning science, we mention things the way they are. Because we don't have any other part to call that part. So when it is time for it, I have to say it the way it is. So stop laughing. So don't laugh. These are the words we have to talk about. So please, here I have three definitions. I've talked about digestive system, rather digestion, digestive system. The definition is here, then alimentary canal. So these are things that we have to talk about. So briefly, we have to look at the parts of the alimentary canal. Parts. Parts of the alimentary canal. Of course, I have to remind you that when I'm here teaching, please make sure you have the book near you. Your pen is very ready because at the end of it all, you have to copy all these notes and you bring the books for marking. That's on Friday. So please don't forget to write. Let us know to watch the video and fail to understand or to write the notes because I need the notes the way you see them. Well written, the work should be well spaced. Please let us produce a very wonderful work. So we are looking at the parts which make the alimentary canal. So we shall begin with the mouth. The first part is mouth. We shall not talk about the parts, of course, the functions. Let us first outline them. Then after we shall talk about part by part. We shall talk about all the parts. Uh, the mouth will be formed by the garret. Here I want to write another name. In case you don't say garret, which another name can we give to garret? It is esophagus. So another name for garret is esophagus. So don't hear the word esophagus and say, we didn't learn this. Where does it come from? This is another name for the garret. So esophagus is another name for the garret. Uh, garret is formed by stomach. That is where food is stored for a short time. Then from the stomach, food goes to the duodenum. Which parts help the duodenum to function in time of digestion? We have the liver and also have the pancreas. So all these parts also uh, help 
in the process of digestion. Then these parts also will be formed because the ordinal being the first part of the small intestine, we have the ileum. This is not how I use this. This is not how we are supposed to write the capital I, but I use it to, uh, to put a change on L and I. So this one is ileum, not ileum. Because when I do like this, and I'm writing because I'm beginning with a capital letter, you look at this as L and L. So that's why I do like this, to put a difference. This one is ill, the second part of the small intestine. Then it will be followed by the first part of the large intestine, known as colon. Then I add another part, of course food from here, it will go directly to the right tongue. Then on the other side, we have another part that also uh, is included under the digestive system known as appendix. So we shall also talk about it. Then lastly, we shall look at the food coming out. This is not the real food that we ate, please. It comes out in four pieces. So this is the outlet, which is called anus. Or in other animals, we call it vent. So please, we have to talk about these parts. Understand them. So food starts in the mouth. Then after putting it in the mouth, we shall look at that term, which is called ingestion. That is the term that we shall also look at. When we come to the digestion in the mouth, then food goes to the garret, then from the garret, it is stored in the stomach for a short time. Then from the uh, stomach, of course, there are some uh, pyrolytic sphincter muscles, which will allow the little food from the stomach to go to the duodenum. And this duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. And ilia is the second part. So these two parts make what we call the small intestines. So that is duodenum and ileum. They make the small intestines. Then uh, the liver has a certain juice it produces which will help in the digestion of food. We shall come to it but keep remembering it. Then we have the pancreas. It also secretes some uh, juice which is also very important in the digestion of food. Then food will go directly to the area, and this is where the digestion of food ends. Digestion of food ends in the small intestines, and which part specifically? The area. Get it? Area is the part where the digestion of food ends. This question is very, very common. They normally ask this question. So whenever I'm talking about these things, please make sure you listen attentively. Don't play around. Please make sure you follow everything that is written here. Then when food, of course I've said it ends in the area. So what happens next? Will all the food that you have eaten enter the bloodstream? No. And digested food, this food that we want to do, that we will say in case we are at school. No matter whether to see some of you say, Ah, teacher, may I go out for a hey, Can I go and ease myself? Please, you know what happens when you go to, for a long haul. You put out food that you don't even wish to see. You know it better. Why? This is an undigested food. So from this stage, the food uh, that is continuing to the colon is no longer useful apart from water which will be absorbed in the colon so the colon will help in absorbing water then the area that is where the digestion of food ends and that is where absorption of food takes place we shall come to those terms the absorption and the digestion of course we have already talked about it what does the word absorption 
absorption mean? We shall come to it. Then food that has uh, that has failed to be digested, the one that we call undigested food, will be stored in the rectum for a short time. But before that, someone will say, now how will the appendix come in? Of course the appendix will come in because this is the part that was created to store any hardy particle that you eat. In case you are eating, and a stick goes accidentally or a stone, it just escapes and end you swallow it. Because you cannot touch your mouth and say, I have to remove it. No. Once it goes, it has to be separated from the food and it is stored in the appendix. That is its function. The work of the appendix is to store hard particles that come along with the food. Why? Because many of you will say, uh -huh. if I swallow it, I will go to the toilet and I just push it. No, it can't. You've never checked yourself and see the shape of the anus. If you see it very well, it is very hard for these particles. If, because you cannot go to the toilet and fail to push, whatever you push like this, if it is a stone, it may cause an injury. That's how God, uh, how God is very intelligent to know that this thing may cause an injury. So let me create this part called appendix to store these hard particles. But of course, don't take it right and say, ah, a teacher told us we have a party that stores these uh, hard particles. No, it is not good to keep swallowing these things. Because some of you put sticks, some of you after eating, you just bring the other toothpicks, then you start picking food, then after you chew that stick and accidentally you swallow some parts. So they are not supposed to pass here, they are stored. What happens when this appendix is full? You have to start feeling a lot of pain. And when you go to the hospital and they scan, they will tell you that your appendix is swollen. I know at this time you feel the pain, even if you're not having it, but the pain will be too much. Remember, this is the, the part that is storing stones, storing sticks, storing some plastic materials, so accidentally we use these things as we are playing and we end up swallowing them. So they have to be stored here. And when they detect that you have this problem, then they have to tell you to be ready for operation and they cut out this part and you no longer have this part. And the person who has this problem is suffering you uh, to cause a disease which is called appendicitis. So after studying all this, we have talked, we have seen the process. We need this, uh, the food we eat. Of course, we have to reach a certain stage and understand why we eat certain foods. Where will they go? How are we supposed to look after our bodies in order to have this energy we are talking about? What do we need? Which types of food are we supposed to eat? And that's why we say, please, make sure as you are uh, at home, talk to your parents and say, Daddy, oh mommy, yesterday, when we are uh, at the time of uh, supper time, then, uh, we had uh, Irish potatoes, we had uh, cassava, we had uh, posho, uh, the one we normally uh, mingle the other posho, of course you understand it, and then we had this sauce. So I think to me, uh, that's the time of yesterday we took only carbohydrates and proteins. That do not bring, but you ask kindly, don't force. Please, then, can we have this? We request that at least you buy us fruits because they are very important. By this time, before you learn the digestive system, we should be able to tell that whatever you have eaten is containing this food very. It is going to be important to me. Don't just eat. And whenever someone asks you how much food you are going to get from the food you are eating, 
and you are not able to tell. <laughs> but I'm just eating. Ah, then my stomach is full. I don't have any problem. No, we don't eat to make our stomach full. We eat for the purpose. We eat to get energy. We eat to have a healthy life or have a healthy body. And we eat in order to grow. So please, as we look at all these three G's, the go, the glow, and grow, make sure you know the foods that are supposed to. Then it will be easier for you to talk about food, the way it moves in the body, and the way it enters the prayer stream. So, for at this time, I have this chart. I want you to look at these parts. Of course, we have talked about them. So some of you will say, ah, oh, teacher is talking about that you now is talking about stomach. Of course, these are the things that we can, of course, see. But please, don't look at your sister and say you can be a very good learning material. And say, if I, I slow time, then I can see these parts. So if you want to see these parts, we don't use a human being to see these parts. We can get other animals because they have the same system and we look at the parts. In case at home, they are going to slaughter a goat, please go there and ask if there is someone who can explain to you, can show you all these parts. So, let's move together on this chart. Uh, I talked about the mouth, it is here. We all know that there are parts involved in the digestion of food, in the breaking down food. This is where we have the tongue, it is also part of the, the, uh, the digestive system. We have the teeth, which help in crushing food. Then we also have saliva, which are produced by the salivary glands. We shall look, uh, we shall see how the saliva is important. Your saliva is not to speak to your friends. It has its function during the digestion of food. So when you finish chewing food, then it has to move to the garret. This is what we will call the alimentary canal, the digestive canal, where your food passes. It does not go to the hands directly. It doesn't go to the legs directly. It has its tube, the muscular tube, where it passes. So from the mouth, food goes to the garret. And we said another name for the garret is esophagus. From the garret, food goes directly to the stomach. There are some uh, processes that take place here. There are processes which take place in the stomach. That's why we normally say the stomach keeps food for some time, for like four to five hours when it is in the stomach. It is being worked upon. Then from the stomach it has to come to this part which is called duodenum. And in the duodenum, that's what I told, I told you that the pancreas has to come in and produce a juice that is going to help in digestion of this food. And the liver, which is the biggest organ in the whole body, it has also to release bile. That is the juice released by the liver, which is also supposed to come to the duodenum to perform a certain task. As we're looking at other parts, we shall talk about each and every part, then make sure that we are able to understand food. This is not the end. No, I'm talking about the parts. You have to know the parts of the digestive system from the mouth up to the anus. But of course, I've talked about like what express in the mouth, but briefly, we shall come to it. Then from the duodenum, as the first part of the small intestine, then it goes to the ileum. Ileum is the second part of the 
small intestine. So, here, if you remember very well, I said that digestion ends in the small intestine. Which part in the area? There is no absorption of uh, food that takes place in all these parts. Apart from some very few things, like three substances, which are absorbed in the stomach. Though we have not reached the stomach, but these are the things that you have to know. Meaning that, of course, when we come to the stomach and we say, hey, teacher talked about this, you're able to tell. So there are some small uh, substances or which are supposed to be absorbed in the stomach. That is simple sugars. We have common salts and alcohol. So please, not there. Then from there, food goes to the appendix. I've told you what to express in the appendix. This is where the hard particles are stored. Then we go to the colon. The whole of this part is the colon. The whole of this big part, the large intestine. So it is made up of the colon and the rectum. Rectum stores and digested food for the short time. It stores food which is not digested for a short time. And this food that we go and digested, we are just sweetening it but it is in the form of feces. So at the end of it all, when you eat, then food has to come to, be, to replace this and this has to be moved out. And of course you know what happens. So of course it has to be ejected through. So please, make sure you copy all this. Make sure you copy the parts of the mental canal. Then, in your book, you draw the digestive system. And after doing this, I request you to answer some simple questions. Very simple questions. So, I'm going to write the questions this side. Copy them, answer them. Make sure you bring your book on Friday for a wonderful and very well organized work.
So my friends, please, let's read through the numbers so that at least you remember how, of course, where I talked about uh, all these things. Then you'll be able to answer questions correctly. Number one, what is digestion? Number two, define digestive system. Three, where does the digestion of food begin from? Where does the digestion of food begin from? Where does the digestion of food begin from? Number four, what is another name? That is, we are missing here name. What is another name for the garret? What is another name for the garret? Number five, how do we call the movement of food along the digestive canal? How do we call the movement of food along the digestive canal? Number six, mention five parts of the digestive system. Number seven, what is alimentary canal? What is the alimentary canal? So, uh, if you read through uh, and you're able to write very well, of course I will be happy as I receive uh, your work well written, of course, with correct answers, well spaced, and I will be happy, of course, to mark your work. Before I finish, please make sure you observe all the SOPs. Make sure you wash your hands, wear your mask, in case you're moving out, please, if you have sanitizer, please sanitize your hands and we shall fight this pandemic out of our country. I thank you so much and waiting to receiving your books. Thank you so much.